our world and beyond. Space, in partnership with the European Space Agency. Planet Earth is warming up. It's a worry for many. Political leaders have made it their priority and are trying to establish ways in which to combat the problem. Climate change. We know it's taking place, but how exactly does it happen? Climate change is caused by uh, levels of greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide, water vapour in the atmosphere, and they trap heat within the atmosphere. So what I'm trying to do is set that up in these two bottles. Say these bottles represent two different planets. Bottle one has a higher concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, and bottle two is normal atmospheric air, just like we know here on Earth. What I want to do is inject some carbon dioxide. Now, carbon dioxide is very, very easy to make. If you just take sort of bog standard vinegar, which is what I've got in here, and then you mix it with baking powder, what you do is you get a chemical reaction. That is releasing carbon dioxide. So now what I'm doing is I'm trapping that gas and feeding it into this bottle here. So I'll get that going. See, all boiling up, lots of carbon dioxide going into this bottle. So this bottle is um, a bottle or, or planet with a higher concentration of carbon dioxide. Now, when we talk about climate change, we're talking about energy coming in from the sun and heating up that gas. I want to do it in a controlled manner. So I've got these two lamps here. So these lamps represent the sun. What I'm hoping is that both of these bottles are starting off at the same temperature, but if I leave it running for a few minutes with the lamps, the added carbon dioxide will make this bottle go up in temperature a lot more than this bottle. It's clear. A few minutes are enough to establish a difference in temperature, which reaches three degrees. Our planet's doing exactly this, just on a grander scale. The town of Guildford, west of London. The bright colours of the clock sparkle under a shining sun. It's most unexpected for November in England. Maggie's an astrophysicist. She devotes much of her time explaining the phenomenon of climate change to the younger generation. Climate change has never seemed to be new. The Earth isn't a static body. Um, its uh, climate, its temperature changes um, over many, many years. So if we go back to the last 20,000 years, we can see sort of high points, we can see low points. But the problem at the moment is the climate seems to be changing as a response to carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases we're putting in the atmosphere. When this happens, the temperature rises. There's still fluctuations on that temperature, but the general trend is upwards, and that could be dangerous for everybody. Over the centuries, the Earth has been both hot and cold, alternating between glacial periods and intense heat. The supposed cause was the Earth's erratic orbit around the Sun. Once this orbit stabilised, the climate became relatively moderate. But then came industrial civilization. Here on planet Earth, we can run around with our sensors and take measurements at different points of the Earth. But space gives us that global view. We see the planet as a whole. And we can take long-term uh, measurements. It means we can take measurements over a, a long period of time. That's the sort of thing we need to understand climate change. We need to look at the various trends that are happening. And doing that from space is an ideal way of doing it. At the Cité des Sciences in Paris, an exhibition shows the importance of space as a platform to understand the Earth. Volker Liebnik is a special visitor. He directs the Earth observation programs at ESA, the European Space Agency. Earth observation missions help to first find out what is the state, to give the decision makers uh, information, what is the trend, and then we can also help to implement. In 2002, ESA sent Envisat, an advanced Earth observation satellite, at an altitude of 800 kilometers into space. Weighing five tons, it's the world's largest observation satellite. 
we prepare a line of science satellites to understand better what is happening, following one standard and giving all scientists of this world uh, access to a database uh, which is absolutely necessary to see really in which direction our planet goes. In order to support these different space missions and to give all political leaders the necessary information, the EU and ESA have set up the GMES program. It will be seven satellites uh, orbiting Earth and observing it in very different areas of the spectrum, looking into ocean, land surfaces, temperatures, uh, looking into atmosphere. So the whole uh, Earth system will be covered uh, by instruments. In the context of the observation of the Earth, ESA have launched two missions this year, GOTCHI, which studies the field of terrestrial gravity, and SMOS, for studying the salinity of the ocean and the moisture of the ground. Now, uh, hopefully on the 25th of February, we are going to launch Cryosat, our ice mission. What we know at the moment from satellites is the ice extent at the poles. What we don't know so uh, exactly is the thickness of the ice and also the, the development of the ice thickness of the sea ice at the poles. Cryosat will allow scientists to create computer models on the acceleration of ice melting, which will show whether a new commercial shipping route is possible. If this happens, it will disturb the natural balance of marine streams, which help stabilize the Earth's temperature. The tools and surveillance to measure this already exist. After the scientists, it's time for the politicians to act. We have to make decisions now uh, in order to have in 2050 at least a reduction of greenhouse gases by 50 percent. Otherwise, we will never stay within two degrees of global warming, which is what scientists tell us uh, is uh, the maximum we should allow. Optimistic, because when we get people together, maybe we can make a difference. But the thing is, results have to come out of the talks. Talking is one thing, but if it doesn't lead to anything, then it's a waste of time. So we need the talks, but then we need action after the talks. So the talks should actually define a way that we should go, and then we need to take that route and actually make a difference. These space missions are proof that something's wrong and that climate change is a threat. To realise this is the first step but we must act quickly to radically change our behavior before time runs out.